All right. Um, so we're going to get uh, started. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is uh, the first time um, we're organizing an investor related track at, uh, at DevPlay. And I um, just want to take one minute to talk about this a little bit. So what uh, inspired this um, was that uh, we had um, some news earlier this year that um, a Romanian studio has, uh, has received some, uh, some funding from a, group of, um, from a group of exclusively Romanian investors. So, uh, and this uh, gave me the idea, okay, I think now that we've had this, this thing that happened where um, uh, several Romanian investors who don't have experience with this sector, uh, but they are starting to look at games, so I think, okay, I think we can actually extrapolate that this is, uh, there's more and more stuff going on uh, in Eastern Europe in terms of investment. So let's, uh, let's do uh, a couple of sessions uh, at DevPlay to talk about this. So that's how we got here and thanks, uh, thanks for, uh, for joining us. Um, I should have started with the introduction. So I'm, my name is Katalin Butnariu. I um, am the founder of, uh, of uh, DevPlay. Uh, I also um, um, manage uh, corporate development uh, for Amber, and uh, I've, I had uh, some experience in the past with uh, uh, in um, in attempting to raise funds, let's say. Um, but um, so I, I have some background in um, how this whole thing um, uh, works. So let I will ask uh, each of the the panelists t t today to introduce themselves and uh, share a little bit uh, about uh, their background and w uh, what they do now. So Nikita, let's uh, let's start with you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikita Vladimirov. I am VP Production at Super.com. We have a publishing arm and an investment fund. We deal with uh, um, uh, PC pl premium games and console games. Uh, I joined Super.com a bit more than half a year ago. Before that, for the 20 years, I've been doing games. Hello, everyone. My name is Wojta Kiesner. Um, uh, I've been working with Fantasy Expo for more than uh, four years for now. It's uh, one of the leading agency here in Central Eastern Europe. And at the same time, we set up our own fund. It's Seed Fund, uh, located in Poland. Uh, Stanisław Fedor, the CEO and founder of Wero Games, um, a game development studio based in uh, Warsaw, Poland. And we have probably attracted all of the possible ways of gathering like the investment funds, starting from VCs, uh, business angels, grants, and so on. Thank you. So, um, yeah, we, I thought it would be interesting to have uh, not just uh, uh, two people from, uh, from the investment side, but also someone who can represent the, the startup side. So this is, uh, this is thanks for, st thank you Stan for, uh, for accepting the invitation. So um, le let's, uh, let's start the discussion by um, uh, talking about um, Eastern Europe. So there, when we talk about Eastern Europe, so th there's a debate whether or not we include Poland in, in a discussion about Eastern Europe. Um, but uh, I think we can look at uh, uh, Poland, uh, the, the Polish market uh, as a sort of a success story. But um, I want what, when I say Eastern Europe, I'm more concerned, I, I'm more thinking about the, uh, the Romania and surrounding countries, so Balkan region and maybe even uh, for a little bit further towards the east, Ukraine, the Baltics and, uh, um, and, and this area. So what are your thoughts about game development, um, ecosystems and especially investment in games in this region? What's, what's going on today and do you have experience uh, um, in dealing with this sector? And, and obviously this is a question for, uh, uh, for, for you guys, uh, especially on the investment side. Okay, I guess I'll start. Um, the ecosystem is a very good uh, word because it describes not only um, <laughs> two parts which are involved into game development process like an investor and a developer, the ecosystem. Um, considers that there is something around, something supporting this relationship. And um, speaking about the Eastern Europe, Poland is a very good example how the government, due to maturity of its own processes, 
created an ecosystem with the government agency distributing European funds, distributing uh, finance um, from the private investors. They help to uh, create a normal conditions for industry growth, for seed money, uh, to make a prototypes, uh, for further search for the more money when the seed round is already received to, to round A to round B. And it's a very good example how the maturity of the government and the level of the government organization supports the industry in general. Um, the other good examples are Scandinavia. I, I would say that this is something we should all aim to because the ecosystem they've built uh, towards the video games industry, supporting arts, supporting movies, are absolutely amazing. And the Eastern European countries in general, they either lack the maturity of the government, the stability of the processes inside, and especially legislation uh, culture. Uh, they either lack size, sheer size and uh, sheer amount of people who can create this critical mass so the large companies can co come in, bring the expertise, bring the experience, something from uh, the rest of the developers can learn and then start their own business. So as an example, the Baltic countries, they are good politically wise, they are stable, but they are just too small. The Latvia, the country I'm originally from, is uh, 2.5 million and it's just simply not enough. So the Poland is a place where all the stars aligned in, in the right direction due to size, uh, due to uh, political climate, and it created what we call a Polish wonder. Um, when we talk the rest of the countries in the Eastern Bloc, there is uh, a lot to learn. There is a long way ahead, but hopefully we will all get there. Yeah, please go. I have yeah, a couple of follow-up questions, okay. but... Uh, uh, Please go ahead first. Yeah, I just want to add something because you said, Nikita, uh, about small countries, but these small countries like Slovenia, for example, they have a very good example of M&A. First of all, uh, mm, uh, talking, uh, talking to and friends, for example, yeah? One billion evaluation, uh, Asian conglomerate. So mm, I think uh, our region, Eastern Europe, has uh, actually something to deliver and they can deliver returns. So from our perspective as a VC, I think even small countries uh, have something to deliver to our, let's say, a bigger picture in Eastern Europe. But I totally agree with all of the, what you said, don't, 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 don't get me wrong, yeah? So uh, talking also about the maturity of the, let's say, country, I think it also depends of, um, let's say, on one end on the politics, because people need to understand that gaming is bigger than music and movies to then understand that, hey, it, this can be a huge uh, source of uh, taxes and in in, in income for the, for the government in, in the future. I think here, like looking at the past, it was something that uh, Witcher helped us to understand for the government that the money is coming then from, from the sales of the games from, uh, from there. And then uh, actually the thing is that uh, the combination of the e EU suppo support and uh, also like the bottom-up approach because for example one of the programs which is called gaming in Poland and the whole amount allocated for uh, the distribution to the gaming developers is around 100 million USD and it's put into different uh, competitions which are then um, granted to the uh, game companies. This year it was around 25 million which was distributed up, uh, among those companies. And uh, this wouldn't be there if uh, there was no move from the industry, so from the companies where we did meet with the uh, center for research and development and told them like, hey guys, there are some sector programs for and bio, and biotech and medicine, etc. So why don't we create this? It took like between three to four years, so it actually happened and this program was established. Uh, but without this, uh, let's say on one hand, education of the government that this is the economy, it's not just like fun and waste of time, but it's a big, huge business. Uh, great. Uh, I 
great point that you mentioned, and uh, I, I want to ask, I, I want to touch on something that uh, Nikita mentioned as well. Uh, just one second, production team, uh, could we turn on the timer, please? And start it. Okay. Um, so um, you mentioned that uh, uh, something that. Um, for uh, the ecosystem to start uh, forming, um, the, the government needs to get involved and support uh, in the way that they do it in, uh, in Poland. So my qu I have a question here, uh, and it, it's, an, it's an open question. Um, is, is that the order of things, or will realistically the government only start to get involved um, when they notice that the company the um, the local industry has reached a, a certain critical mass or has had uh, a certain specific uh, success. Because if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in Poland, the government really started to get involved once uh, Witcher sales started to pick up. What are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, so I think it's. I think it was like that in the past, but having in, uh, already the experience of the past, we can be proactive and change the things how they're gonna be uh, performing. Because, um, especially having like developing countries, it's important to support those uh, small uh, ideas, small studios, etc. Because usually there is not much uh, of the capital around there that you can gather either from some business angels, etc. So this kind of support can uh, definitely boost the whole ecosystem. Because else you're going to have some small single entities, like for example in Serbia, etc., uh, which can m create hits. But the ecosystem will be missing, right? So there, those will be like a single uh, points on the, on the map over there. Cool. Uh, you wanted to add something? Uh, yes, um, that's a question of chicken and the egg. Yeah. So, and uh, also, I <laughs> couldn't notice uh, that in, in your question, the government was by itself, and we are by itself, and it has to not to be this way. Yeah. I mean, we are supposed to be the government. Um, I think that we are, as industry professionals, has to be much more proactive, because the people in the government, they are like us, and they also have their goals, and one of their goals is to uh, research in new sectors in the economy and develop these new sectors in the economy. They just lack the understanding and knowledge about what we do, how we do, and how big the source of income it might be. So we as an industry professional have to go first. We have to go to them. We have to invite them to the events like this. We have to show them that this is not the toys for kids. This is a mature industry with uh, decades of experience and billions in revenue. Yeah. And that would help. Totally agree. And uh, it's one thing we're, we, we've been starting to do in Romania. And um, I think if, if uh, other countries in the, in the region uh, would also start to proactively talk with, uh, with their respective governments, I think we'd all get there faster. But uh, the, the, the matter of size is. Um, remain, remains an issue, right? So uh, the, the critical mass of, uh, of um, a local industry. So in that, uh, thinking about that, um, does it make, does it, would it make sense and to talk about Eastern Europe as a, as a bigger block rather than take in, so could we talk about, I mean, we can talk about the Polish ecosystem. Could we talk about an Eastern Europe ecosystem, and I mean, I, I'm kind of thinking out loud here, um, but and there would, there, there would be so many things that would have to be put in place for, for that to happen, but perhaps if enough countries in, in Eastern Europe can get together and sit on the same table, uh, perhaps there can be some um, initiative that would help companies in, in, uh, in this sector. I'm kind of daydreaming here. This, uh, this sounds very challenging as I'm saying it, but um, it, it could, could, could that be conceivable, do you think? A multinational um, initiative that, uh, that supports uh, companies in the sector? So if I might just jump in. Uh, talking about the size, 
uh, of the of the country looking at Finland come on there are five million people living in there so it, it's not I think not always about the size of or the population of the country right or how many uh, unicorns are there in uh, Serbia for example in terms of gaming like or let's say about outfit seven etc right so there are definitely uh, possibilities to have like hits and great studios even in those small countries um, so I think that the governments could start even in those right but uh, regarding talking about the cooperation of couple uh, countries um, it's I think it's hard to say usually the more people are involved the harder it's to make something happen right you know um, maybe I can tell you a little bit more about my experience regarding the eSport world because this is something very hot right now and um, we already established something like that so basically we are looking for a federation uh, a European eSport federation so basically we are seeking something like much higher than only country to country cooperation so on the multi-level let's say it so basically we would like to establish like an organization like FIFA or, or UEFA because we see lack of experience in delivering a high value for our business partners and especially to create added value for our government as well. So basically that's why we want to have one actually body to represent the whole sector. So from my perspective, uh, it worked in eSports, so maybe it can work you know, uh, in, in gaming. I mean, in But it started with the Jeff. federation, right? Yes. So it's again, we, need, we as an industry, we need to be proactive and create that organization and then we can, we can take all the, all the ne necessary steps to get there. Um, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, region specific challenges. What, uh, so when it comes to investment, um, you guys uh, um, have, have experience with this. How is this region different um, than others? Is it about uh, the experience uh, or lack of experience of developers? Is it uh, capital or how, wh what are the specific uh, challenges that uh, you guys find in, uh, in Eastern Europe? And uh, same question the other way around, um, what is the potential? What are the opportunities? What, what does this region have that others don't? So um, one of the things uh, which is, in my personal opinion, missing from a region right now is uh, courage. Because, you, for example, Romania has a great game development experience. The companies came here like 20 years ago, large companies. So the amount of expertise, the amount of people with a large amount of experience, it's here. The only thing which is missing is the courage to stand up and say, I want to do my own game. And being sure that while you are doing a prototype, you would not starve. Uh, yeah. You would not be shut down by the government officials due to electricity permits or, I don't know, whatever. Uh, and you would know that uh, there is enough finance support in the region overall. So you have a good chance of getting, um, getting the financial uh, support you need. And right now, in the most Eastern European countries, this is something we all lack. Yeah. Just courage to start. Um, adding to that, what Nikita said, uh, I think there is also lack of uh, big acquirers. I mean, acquirers, I mean, uh, big companies that are looking for uh, small studios to, to, to cooperate. So, from my perspective, I see that, okay, let's, we, let's even invest, you know, in two or three studios for, uh, for a year, and then we will see what actually we can get, but at the end of the day, we still looking for some acquires at the beginning. So that's why I'm looking for studios, for example, to to sell it at the 
uh, at the start, at the beginning of cooperation with with with, with particular um, startup. I think one one element is also the maturity of the capital markets because if you have some investors that have already earned money on gaming, then it's easier to next of them to follow and to also engage and then support some couple of people who have some idea and who believe it might be the next big hit. Uh, because else it's still like the thing that, oh, gaming, it's easy to lose their money, etc. Yeah? Gaming is a hit-driven industry, so you never know if you're gonna hit it or, or miss it. Um, and that's why having already their uh, investors who, um, or maybe even founders who did uh, um, succeed, then exited, and then they can reinvest the money to new uh, endeavors and maybe new teams and studios. Uh, this is something that's also supporting the, uh, the ecosystem. Yeah, I think um, um, to follow up on that, I think Inve the ex experience of local investor uh, investors uh, is a factor, of course. Um, it, it, coming back to the story of how this uh, this uh, track started. Hello. Okay. Uh, so coming back to the story about how this uh, track got started, um, it was. I mean, up until very recently, when we were talking to uh, maybe one or two years ago, when we were talking to gaming, when we were talking to investors about in Romania, about uh, video games. Um, I mean, any discussion had to start with a big introduction on the games industry, the whole story that it's bigger and uh, that then uh, movies and uh, music combined and and so on. So all of that speech. Uh, I mean, yeah, we have to. Uh, um, Inform that uh, inform these uh, these funds these investors that there is significant potential here. So I th that's definitely a factor um, that I see. Um, but for the already experienced investors from Western Europe, from US, from um, even um, uh, moving uh, even looking at East. Um, Russia, China. So th th there are so many uh, companies and people investing in games. Uh, I'm wondering if it's a good time for these people that have a, the experience to start looking at studios from uh, from this region. Would you say that it's a it's a good time, or does the industry still need to become more mature? I think it is the right time because we also, s or at least um, from what I'm talking with some uh, Chinese uh, developers, publishers, or companies <laughs> who also are willing to, to invest, etc. Earlier, I think like three, ma three years ago, everybody was like, oh, we want to invest in the Nordics and we want to have a studio in Finland. Yes, everybody was, was saying something like that. And right now they are actually Oh, we would like to open a subsidiary in Poland, Ukraine, or uh, Belarus. So this is, I think, uh, changing into this uh, this direction. Yeah. Yeah. Just to adding that, uh, Romania, for example, you have uh, here a big subsidiaries like King, for example, or Electronic Arts, or many others. So that kind of community can create new games. So I think it's a very good time for all the venture capitals to come here and actually invest in. It's yeah, I would just want to say that for the last few years, it's more and more becoming a seller's market. So there are more and more capital into the industry. Everybody wants to invest in video games because the sheer numbers are growing and everybody recognizes it as a very interesting uh, industry. So uh, it's always a good time. And today is especially because there is so much money on the table and there is not so many companies uh, which are interesting to put the money in. So it's a seller's market. Life is about moment. Don't wait for them. <laughs> Create them. So w um, what about uh, the opportunities then? Um, what's special about developers in Eastern Europe? What, what makes the region attractive? Uh, besides being a new market that has the potential to explode. I, is there a, a, a local ingredient that makes things interesting? Um, 
I already mentioned that I have a game development experience and uh, I've been working with amazing teams all over Europe and Eastern Europe and something what the Eastern Europe has is lack of experience in conventional games. We didn't grow up with uh, Nintendo Family Com, so we didn't grow up with the consoles, so our, our experience with games is different. The way we see games as uh, articles of art is different, and that's why the amount of truly innovative, truly artistic games from Eastern Europe is huge. Right. We uh, have uh, so many gorgeous submissions, amazing submissions, which have nothing to do with the conventional gameplay or how it should be done. So the lack of experience multiplied by originality and amazing artistic approach, this is something what games makes games from this in Eastern Europe absolutely unique. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, I think definitely the coding or programming skills are on a very high level um, in, in our region and uh, mm, also part of this uh, what Nick already said so I think like the creativity or thinking outside of the box because we had to do that looking at our past and history right um, so Okay, uh, uh, Stan, I want to, uh, since you have the, the mic, uh, can you share a little bit uh, from your experience as a startup in Poland? Um, how did you raise funds? I know you, you've raised money a bunch of times from uh, and, and di different types of uh, uh, um, sources. So can you share a little bit uh, about how you raised money in, in, in your company's history? Sure, so um, I think today there are way much more possibilities that were back then when we were starting in December 2012. Um, everything started when I decided to switch uh, what I was doing, so I had like a interactive agency that uh, was created when I was still at the, studying at the Warsaw School of Economics. And, uh, but with the time I was a little bit, let's say, bored with it or I was not seeing that I can evolve uh, more. And that's why we decided also with the CTO to move into, make the move into gaming. Although we had basically zero experience in terms of how to develop games back then. But uh, yeah, there was the passion, there was the talent and and the determination and we were able to create prototypes and showcase that yes we can do that and do it on a pretty high uh, level with this we went to like one event which was uh, matchmaking between uh, startups and uh, vcs it was in poznan uh, called demo camp and there were like already three vcs that got pretty interested in what we were doing because they saw the quality uh, and it was around uh, June uh, 2012. And uh, out of those three, we, one of them were like people or uh, business angels who earlier had like brick and mortar businesses, people like 40, 50 plus. So I was like, they might not really understand what we are doing here in terms of the interactive content, etc. The other VC was having like 20 or 25 investment and was outside of Warsaw. So uh, there was the question, how will be the focus on our studio and how will they be able to help us, not just with the pure money, but also maybe with some smart money, like, like the smart element additionally. And there was the third one, which there was this chemistry from the, from the beginning with the, uh, with the manager of the fund. And uh, th what was interesting th also that they were just in the process of establishing the fund. So in the end, it ended that uh, around uh, December they started with the fund and they invested into Fuero as their first investment in uh, December 2012. Interestingly, in between, we started the talks with uh, CD Projekt to develop a game together and signed the deal in February 2013 
to create the Witcher Battle Arena, so like a mobile MOBA game set within the Witcher uh, IP. And uh, so the first part, or, or everything starts with like their past experience. We received the uh, VC round. It was a very little round back then. It was like 50K USD. Uh, and comparing that, uh, in the US, at the same time, there were like two companies, uh, Hammer and Chisel and Super Evil Megacorp, which received like five and 10 million USD to also create like a mobile MOBA game. So it was uh, definitely very challenging to make this, those things happen and I'm really happy that, that we made it and uh, then uh, released the game. In between, uh, we were also able to uh, apply for some grants by the Polish government, which were subsidized by the European Union. Um, which were helping to create innovation, and that's how we created some new uh, like uh, engines for the games on on our end for the backends. Uh, later on, we also got a grant, uh, or we did apply for a grant from the European Commission uh, from Brussels, so not the national funds but the central ones uh, for the creative media program which will, mm, is focused on uh, story-driven games or narrative games. And with those funds, we were able to uh, create the prototype of our uh, game called Bushy Tail. This game has received, uh, just the prototype itself has received over 25 nominations and awards uh, all around the world, like starting from Los Angeles through Paris, London, and, and even Shenzhen and that wouldn't be possible without this, this grant. Later on, we did also raise some next round from, from another VC, so we have like two VCs and some business angels on board who also joined uh, in between. And uh, in 2017, we successfully also applied for a grant from this gaming funds, so this dedicated uh, program for the gaming sector for development of a AI-driven system for testing of uh, mobile games. Because we saw as a developer that it's like a crazy um, issue to test uh, those mobile games on hundreds basically of devices. So, and, and mistakes happen because people are people. So that's why, thanks to the grant, because without the grant, we wouldn't be creating something such a solution yeah. <coughs> in-house on our own because that would be hey, too risky and we wouldn't have those, those funds in there. So I'm, I'm curious if, if it's possible to share. In, in the um, lifetime of, uh, of Fuero Games, um, would you know roughly how, how much money you have raised? Yeah, so I actually was uh, having a presentation regarding this like two weeks ago in Kazakhstan and I was summing up those numbers and it's around, uh, it's over a million USD from the grants, it's uh, around uh, 750k from VCs, uh, around 500k USD from business angels and uh, over a million and a half uh, from different publishing deals, uh, etc. Okay, so excluding the publishing deals, which are sort of a different uh, beast, if I calculate it correctly, that's somewhere close to two million dollars. Uh, it's over. It's over two million. It would be around two, two, two and a half. Through government funding and uh, VCs. VCs, angels, etc. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think that's a great uh, that's a great story. And uh, uh, speaking about courage, um, it, it to get money you have to ask for it. That's the first step. So, um, yes. <laughs> so there, there are two things basically. One is like when the, um, as Nick said in our conversation before, before the panel, it also, it's about the timing, right? Right now the gaming is basically hot in terms of uh, people see the successes, so they would like to invest in there. So that also helps uh, to, to actually then go and look for, for those opportunities. But uh, I think the most important thing uh, for, for gaming is uh, the teams and the people, because very often when there is an investor coming, he's like, okay, so you guys wanna develop a game and what's the probability it's gonna be a success? 
I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. With games, right? that's a tricky so question with games. It's yeah. more about uh, trusting the people you will going to be investing into, seeing that their determination, their passion, and their drive. If it's not there, and you feel that this is like their, let's say, pro project of their life, and that's something that they want to do. Um, then it's easier to, to make the bet because even if this one project doesn't work out, yeah. then they will yeah, have find a portfolio the other way and out, so on. Right? On, on that note, as, as we're getting close to, to time, um, uh, what is your advice for the developers in this region right now? So um, I completely agree with everything you just said, and as an uh, answer, I want to continue. Uh, like when is a good time to ask for money? Uh, virtually any time, because uh, uh, the business people, the investors, they are looking to invest in a business venture which can generate the revenues on the long run. And it's not about the game. It's not about the product or prototype you have. It's about the team, the people you work with. Because, okay, the first product might not succeed, but if the team is good enough to do it on a regular basis within the budget, then it would be a successful relationship. And uh, something to advise is don't be shy. Don't be shy, go out, talk to people. There is uh, nobody ever been killed for asking. And you have enough expertise and enough experience to initiate a discussion, to initiate a dialogue, and we will see where it's going to take us. Yeah, my advice is that um, make sure your CSC and LTV works uh, and come to us. Uh, we are here for you. So basically, I can share my business contact after the conference. So, so you couldn't resist yourself. <laughs> Um, <coughs> what I was uh, also about to say is uh, that having in mind, hey, uh, you, you have to try, you have to believe into your passion and uh, tr also speak about it. Because um, a friend of mine from the Polish gaming industry, uh, they were able to create their game because actually she was talking about that she's work, developing a pro project and working on a game with some friends and meeting with other people and so on. And then it turned out that people she would never think that they could invest or they have some money. It turned out that it happened and that uh, made, made it possible, right? So A, you never know when it can happen. So if you believe and you dream and you share this with other people, then it will spread and will attract at some moment. Okay, thanks. Thanks for, uh, we're getting close to, to time. So, and we have a couple of minutes to, to take uh, questions. Um, thanks a lot for all of your input. Let's, uh, Give a short round of applause for, uh, for our guests. Um, do we have uh, questions from the audience? Okay. Uh, production, do we, do we have a, an extra mic? I'll, 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 okay, thanks. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask if you can share a bit more things about what you said earlier, that when you try to convince people um, about uh, helping out with money, they will ask for very down-to-earth things, like what's the success rate of making, uh, of, of reaching these things. And uh, you said earlier that it's about uh, establishing um, uh, confidence and, and trust. So maybe you have uh, more stories about how to convince. Obviously, with people that have experience in the gaming industry already, it's easier to work with, but I think that this is something that, uh, um, yeah, would be really in interest for us to find out more about. Um, who wants to take that? So, um, as I already said, it's a seller's market, so there is a lot of money on the table, uh, both from uh, profile investors and non-profile. And I always would advise to work with the profile people because less to explain. They know better, they, they understand the risks even better than the developer. So, um, and when we talk with the profile investor, there is a number of points where, for example, I take a look at. 
So when the pitch comes in, there is a number of documentation usually comes with a pitch, like uh, a development schedule, um, game design document, and how well they're done, how well they're thought of, gives pretty good understanding of the team professional level and the team uh, qualifications. So um, that, the presentation, it's not necessarily the game itself because we understand that what we see going to be probably 90% cases going to be scrapped off and started from the very beginning because it was done on in, on the knees and at home and so on. So does it answer your question? Uh, the track record is something to start the conversation. But then this track record has to be supported by something. And yeah, usually it, this is the pitch package and how the negotiation goes on, how mature and professional your party is. So. It's, it's, the, it's the, um, the way that uh, you present yourself uh, as a company that tends to matter quite a bit. Also, one, it also depends who are you approaching, uh, because if you're talking maybe with some business angels who do, the, do not really have like experience in the gaming industry, because uh, it's like, say, I don't know, you're looking for money for, to, to leave your job and to start to work on your idea, um, then I think easiest way is to actually uh, get them emotionally engaged into what you are doing. Because if, if they're going to like what you're doing or if it's going to be aligned with what they're thinking or what they're like, uh, it's, it's going to be easier for you to convince them. For those guys who are professional and they have the experience and know what they do, that is like a couple of things. So as I said before, uh, probably if you have like 20 years experience in the industry, etc., it will be pretty easy for you to, to get it. If you don't have it, but you have like the, the passion and the determination, then you can showcase a prototype, something that shows that, oh, there is something new, there's the new idea, the concept is something fresh uh, that, should be, mm, that should come to the market and it might be a hit. Um, and then of course it's about like the professional uh, approach uh, later on. Okay, um, we're out of time. Uh, I, if, is there any other question? We can take one very short question, if any. Okay, I guess we're good then. Thank you, guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of the, of the event. And